Persia, The Forgotten Sands, for the Wii. It appears that this version is quite different from the other console versions. I'll get into that. Also, this cover says that it has the original 1992 version of Prince of Persia, which is not actually the original version, it's the re-release that I haven't played yet. The disc says it's the 1989, which is the actual original, so I don't know, I guess there was a bit of a d disagreement between the cover people and the disc people. I haven't been able to actually unlock the classic Prince of Persia yet, so I can't say which one it is. I'm not entirely sure when this takes place. I wish I could tell you. I am pretty sure that the other console version takes place sometime during the Sands of Time trilogy, maybe before Warrior Within, since Warrior Within you know, where Warrior Within ends is where the Two Thrones picks up, so anyway. This has almost nothing to do, it actually does have nothing to do with the Sands of Time trilogy other than the Prince. The Prince's voice and the prince, Prince's appearance. It can't take place after... Yeah, it has no Sands of Time, so, and no Dahaka, so it can't take place before Warrior Within, because at the beginning of Warrior Within, he says he's been chased by the Dahaka since the Sands of Time story ended, you know, the first game. So, anyway, the prince is now searching for a kingdom to call his own. He has Sahra, a John, I hadn't heard the word before either, but it's apparently a female jinn, meaning a genie. And there's no three wishes here, she kind of just follows him around and does stuff for him, magically. With magic. Her name is Zahra, and she enjoys long walks in ruins of cities, being called by her name, and entering statues of women and asking the prince to kiss them. She actually says at one point that if he calls her by her name, she'll call her by his, which would be really cool because nobody knows what the heck his name is. Anyway, she takes him to a kingdom of sorts, or a sultandom, and there's some trouble going on there, so he has to basically clean stuff up before it can be his. And basically, the game is you as the prince cleaning up in this kingdom. There's something rotten in the kingdom of Istahar, I think is what it's called. There's a twist to the story, but it's unbelievably obvious. It's just right away you're going to be able to tell what's actually going on here. The theme is plant life, and it's probably the lamest of the games that I've played, which is all of them other than the 2008 version. I am working on it. I need to install either Windows XP or Windows Vista on my new computer, which currently only has Windows 7, which can't run the game because it needs XP or Vista. And 7 apparently can't emulate it properly. Anyway, plant life. Basically, there are all your enemies die plant style. Your enemies are also the least memorable, least interesting thus far of, you know, the games. Again, can't speak for Prince of Persia 2008 version. From now on, just assume that I can't, because I can't. There are some plants that you will you know, they'll hurt you, or maybe even kill you if you touch them, those are red. And some yellow plants, which will block magic, I'll get into that. Yeah. Early on, there are some pretty cool, you see, like, plants starting to grow out of, you know, like, roots breaking through walls. That's pretty cool. 
This streamlines a lot of what the prince can do. I'm going to assume that you know the basics of it, because I could be here all day talking about that. You know, it's the... it's what he could do since the beginning of the Sands of Time trilogy. He could do a couple of new things. I think. No, basically it's just streamlined. I think that might just be it. I've already made an entire video talking about how lame the whole streamlining thing is. Basically, you can't jump too far if, you know, where you could jump too far in one of the other games, you can't now, and if you jump into a wall, you can then run up it, even though that really doesn't make sense. Stuff like that. It is a bit... It's not quite as good as with the others, where there was just more of a sense of danger. Anyway, enough on that. Ubisoft... You keep doing this. I can't believe how you can keep making these games so freaking entertaining. It's more or less the same gameplay. How can the same dish, cooked almost the same way, over and over, be so unbelievably entertaining? I mean, I'm not speaking for everyone here, but I love these games. I can't get enough of them. Yeah, they just... Golden Goose here. The, the goose that lays the golden eggs, whatever that saying is. There are a couple of new gameplay elements in this. Before I get into the fun ones, I just want to complain a little bit about the sword. You don't fight as fast as you used to, as far as I can tell. In the Sands of Time trilogy, you know, you fight about as slow as you did in the original trilogy, and that ain't good, because, you know, the, you know, the most recent of those games were from 1999, and back then it was slow two, it was slow because it was trying really hard to be the first two games. But enough about that train wreck, I already covered it. You have a gauntlet. You can't carry two swords anymore. You do. You have a gauntlet instead, like you did in the 2008 version. I don't know if it works quite the same, but as far as I can tell, it doesn't. There are a couple things that it can't do here. Basically, you use that if the enemy is blocking a bunch, you can use that to break his block. It's almost useless. I barely had any use for it. The prince also holds his sword kind of backwards, you know, instead of holding it like this and it goes up, he holds it like this and it goes this way. I don't know. I think it's just to show off. The fun ones are the, I think it's called creation magic. It has nothing to do with creationism, thankfully. Basically, you get these over the course of the game and you can't use them everywhere right away, but what they are is if you click B when you point downwards, just real quick, you use the A button, meaning the one that you used to only use for jumping, you use that for special actions now, also. It really isn't a change that matters, you know, it doesn't make it more difficult, really, basically. Anyway, you point down and click special action, you will make a tornado, I guess you could say, and it lets you get a bit further up. It doesn't hurt you or anything, and you can, you know, use that to reach slightly higher ground. If you use the creation power on a wall, you will create a magic hook, which you can grab, and, you know, you can wall run from it, you can wall run upwards from it, you can just jump away from the wall using it, and the final creation power is that if you're in the air and you just click, you will create a magic bubble around you. 
and this will keep you in the air for as long as you want or until it gets broken by like an enemy attack or there's also this fugu creature thingy blowfish that feeds off the magic and you know it's gonna be attracted to it and it'll you know soak it up it'll absorb it you know so if you're on a wall or in a bubble at the time you will fall and it might also hurt you because it has spikes on it you can of course send it to the other end of the room by sending a creation power on a wall at the other end of the room so that's kind of cool and it basically just means you have to be fast <coughs> Excuse me. now each of these creation powers Obviously, you could really abuse the crap out of them and just go anywhere if there weren't limitations. So basically, you can only use them once at a time. You can never create more than two hooks unless you use the spots that are for creating hooks. Those are always in one of uh, maybe four colors. And all of the ones in the vicinity that are that same color will also become a hook. Other than that, only create one hook, only create one bubble. You can't, like, jump down from really high up by jumping out, creating a bubble, letting go of the bubble, creating a new bubble. You can't do that. Once you leave the first bubble, you have to have touched a wall or, like, you know, grabbed something before you can make another one. You can also not make more than one of the tornadoes at a time. You know, you have to leave one before you can create another one. You can climb walls using basically the hook and then, you know, running up the wall, jumping off the wall, creating a bubble, creating a new hook. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And basically it doesn't let you go anywhere you're not supposed to be able to go does sometimes offer you a couple of different ways to get there, but you'll still be going the same place and you'll still be taking the same route, the same path. You'll just be reaching it in slightly different ways sometimes. There is co-op in this game. I haven't tried it, but it sounds lame. Basically, there won't be a second prince. You know, this is not like, for example, the Avatar game, where a second one will show up and you know in the regular game you can both fight no basically the second player just plays Zahra so she can make him f make the prince faster at moving blocks stuff like that the manual says that the most powerful one is that they can switch who uses the creation magic and that should tell you about how lame she is that's all the second player will get to do is you know create the hooks tornadoes and bubbles for the pl first player that's all you know I guess if he gets really jealous he could let him die or something there are no sands of time in this but when you die and you will die you can respawn if you have these... Basically, you will respawn no matter what. There's no real loading in this game. You, you come back to life at the nearest fountain, which is where you save the game. And I think it does whether or not you drink from it. If you drink from it, it'll refill your, refill your health bar. That's if you don't have any of the, I guess, orbs. If you have the orbs, you can come back to life close to where you died. And the orbs, you fill up... I think you have to pick up like four floating orbs in the levels. And these are all over the place, so... You know, a lot of the time, you will have several chances. Similar to how you could rewind time if you died in, you know, the Sands of Time trilogy. So, you know, they are still keeping some of that alive. It works pretty well with the whole orb thing. You can sometimes get orbs by smashing vases and you know, stuff like that. And that 
to me makes more sense than there being sands of time in vases. I don't know, it just doesn't really make sense that this really important magical stuff would be in vases various places near where the sands were unleashed as much as just random orbs that, you know, give life or something being in the ruins of, you know, assaulting them. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. The graphics are nice but this uses a lot of pretty cheap, straightforward effects. There's a lot of lighting effects. It's basically just, they really fell in love with the stuff and just made lights of all different colors for the different things. And it just it gets old really quickly. The... When you prolong the life bar, they just cannibalized the one from Sands of Time. It's pretty cheap and it looks a lot less impressive. They made this kind of ethereal, like it's floating in the air kind of quality where before it was like a cavern. You know, it's just not as mysterious. It just doesn't work as well. This has unlockables including secret maps that you can play. And, you know, that's cool enough. A lot of the unlockables are pretty much just just beat the game and do okay at it and you'll unlock stuff, you know. But there are other things so you might, you know, still be coming back to it. I find the gameplay so darn addictive, I probably will be coming back to it. When I die, I will be found with a Prince of Persia game on whatever console in whatever year this happens, you know, it might even be totally retro if they stop making them. Please don't stop making them. Ubisoft, as long as you have ideas, call me up if you need any. I don't know if I have any, but I'll, I'll find a way to get some. Call in some favors. You know, a couple of people in the mob. You didn't hear that. The the basic gameplay is as fulfilling, as satisfying, as in, you know, the Sands of Time trilogy. Overall, some of the puzzles are pretty easy for a long time. It doesn't seem like the game is ever going to get difficult or challenging. It does. The boss fights are... A Tad, I know it's kind of just the same few. I'm not gonna tell you how many there are, but there aren't a lot. There aren't a lot of bosses, and it's basically the same ones you keep fighting. The last boss is just terribly easy. I don't. It's the easiest final boss fight since you know the first Sands of Time game. I don't know what happened there. Maybe it was like a last minute addition, you know, how they, maybe they had to fix how the fight originally was, or maybe they thought it was way too difficult, so they overcompensated. I don't know, but it's real easy. The conclusion is overall okay. It's a little bit odd, but it's okay. Zahra who you do spend the entire game with, she's always following you, is kind of okay, you know, it's real important with a character like that, that they don't annoy the crap out of you, you know. I think they did a good job on Farah in, you know, Sands of Time trilogy. Here, she's, she's not bad. She's not too annoying. She answers in riddles all the time, and you know she like she knows the history of the Sultandom, so she's like delivering exposition some, and I don't know, it's it's okay, it's not too much because she doesn't tell you too much of what exactly. You know, she she'll hint and sometimes tell you this was made by this this god or this was made to do this or that, but, you know, 
and there are definitely some really you know about the the areas there are some very memorable ones and overall I think the level design was pretty good this takes about the same approach to that as Warrior Within. You'll be visiting several of the same areas several times, you know, and sometimes you'll come back and you can do something new so you can get to the area that you couldn't before. You know, and stuff like that. It's not quite as much as with Warrior Within where, you know, if you just, if you stop to think about it, there are just, I don't know, a couple of dozen different areas and you just keep going back to the same one. Here there is more, you know, more variety in more different areas, but you will sometimes, like, backtrack and stuff like that. There's a hint system, and while it is sometimes kind of, duh, yeah, I knew that, it does sometimes help, and you do sometimes need it. I sometimes needed it, anyway. That might be more or less it for the non-spoiler review. The length is appropriate. At first I thought it was going to be really short, but it turned out to be maybe twice as long as I thought it was. So It's about as long as the others. It took me a couple of days, and trust me, I've been playing it every single time. My fingers, my wrists, and my feet could handle it. My feet because I stand when I'm playing. Not because I use the, you know, my feet with the joystick anymore. Yeah, I think that is it for the spoiler-free review. So, that was the spoiler-free review of Prince of Persia, Forgotten Sands, for the Wii. I don't know how much of this applies to the other versions. I've seen a review of it, and none of the gameplay footage, none of the complaints... You know, none of that sound. One last thing. There are occasional bugs in this, like you'll respawn in a deadly area. This only happened to me once, though. And it is a little bit disconcerting that there is only one save. Literally, if this did mess up, you'd have to start over. You know, if the save got corrupted. But this never happened to me. I heard that... The other one, you know, the guy reviewing it had to restart it. I'm just going to say it. It was Sean Faust on That Guy With The Glasses. Go check it out. Excellent review. Excellent site. Excellent reviewers. And I'm going to stop now. But this one never really... You know, I never had to replay a lot or anything. The safe spots were also nice and plentiful and... Usually there isn't too much space between them so you won't have to replay a ton if you just keep dying. Unless you really suck, I guess. I'm gonna stop now. I hope you enjoyed it.